Hey, Steve here, and welcome to this next episode of uh, Processing Subscribers Images. This image has been sent to me from uh, Glenis Kill. So thanks, Glenis, for sending this through. Um, and she has basically uh, didn't have anything specific, really, uh, any specific technique to ask about, but she just wanted to send this image through and uh, ask me to turn it into something special. So <laughs> I'll see what I can do in terms of that. Um, but I think this image has got a lot of potential. Obviously, it's a really interesting scene, um, but it can be a bit difficult sometimes processing fog uh, or mist. I'm not sure the difference, <laughs> whatever that is in this image. Um, yeah, it can be quite difficult to sort of process this to make it actually look good. Um, I think that yeah, it's going to be more a sort of example of uh, using some some creative techniques. Um, yeah, rather than like getting too technical. Uh, so even though I'll be using the luminosity masking panel, we probably won't need much in the way of luminosity masking itself. I'll just be using some of these shortcuts to some of the uh, adjustments and effects that I'm going to use. So um, yeah, with that said, just quickly, if you haven't got the panel, then uh, there's a button below this video that you can uh, use to go and purchase the panel. It's $97 if you haven't got it yet. Um, otherwise, all of these techniques that I'm showing you, um, you know, you can still achieve them using the uh, the regular way of creating those adjustments in Photoshop. It's just the panel is going to help you do it quicker, and uh, you know, it's just going to give you a bit of a head start and save time. So you know, <laughs> I know that time is one of those things that everyone seems to struggle with. So you know, hopefully, it's going to help you, um, you know, shave a few seconds off your processing. So with that said, let's uh, dive into the demonstrations. So I, I did actually have a little play with this before I hit record. And so I kind of have a rough idea of where I'm going to go uh, with the processing. I think, um, yeah, with that said, I didn't actually uh, sort of go back on any of the decisions I made. So, you know, my, my instinct, uh, you know, first time around did end up sort of creating a, a nice looking shot. So I'm just going to kind of try and recreate that now. Uh, the first thing I did was use a um, color correction technique that is uh, can be found under the color section of the luminosity masking panel. Uh, this technique here, I'll just run the shortcut now to show you. So um, I'll hit the button there, and that's going to color correct based on the uh, the values in the histogram of each of the red, green, and blue channels. Um, so that's like a one-click color correction. And I'll just show you what it actually does. Uh, so basically, if I just open the curves adjustment and go to each of the red, green, and blue channels, what it's doing, it's it's moving this point here at the very top of the curve um, up to the point where the, it reaches the first little bit of uh, data in the histogram. So you can see there's quite a lot of room on the right-hand side of the histogram data. And so this is basically just going through each channel and moving that end point to the first little bit of data that it finds. So you'll see the same thing in the red, green, and the blue channels. So I think I slightly adjusted that, so I'm just going to delete it and redo it. Uh, so you know you can do that same adjustment you like manually if you want. Um, but yeah, I think that just kind of uh, you know it brings through the nice colors in the leaves on the ground. Um, so you know that's a nice first adjustment to, to make. And I think overall what we're going to try and do is kind of make this little wooden hut stand out and be the main subject. Obviously it's composed to be the uh, the main subject, but I think just it's getting a little bit lost in all the mist and all the trees. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to focus on bringing that out by brightening it up, adding detail and, you know, doing the opposite to the surroundings. Um, so, you know, uh, making them a bit darker and, um, you know, drawing the attention away from them to this wooden hut. Uh, so, you know, I usually like to start off after I've figured out the color in an image. I'll head over to the uh, light section and start adding some contrast adjustments. My levels adjustment here, um, that's going to give me a good start for sort of making the contrast just pop a little bit. Uh, we don't want to make this too contrasty because that will kind of lose the effect of the uh, of the fog or mist. Uh, but this is a pretty good start. Um, let me just see what else. If we can just push that a little bit further, 
just for now. So that looks quite good. Um, the sky is getting a bit bright up here, so I think next we can maybe try to uh, sort of darken that top section of the image. And we can do that using this uh, multiply button. So that's a nice technique here for making a nice dark uh, layer. And yeah, that's basically creating a curves adjustment, putting in multiply blend mode and changing the opacity to 50%. So that's just a shortcut for that. Um, and yeah, we probably don't want it in the whole image. We don't want to darken the whole thing. So I'm just gonna take a black brush on about 50% opacity. I'm just gonna brush this effect out of the uh, foreground and probably reduce the opacity again a little bit and just remove it from these trees over here. Okay, so let's see what that is giving us. Yeah, so it's starting to kind of close in the, uh, the focus around the center of the image. So by darkening the edges and leaving the middle bit brighter. Um, yeah, so basically what we're gonna do now is just to sort of repeat these uh, processes just gradually, step by step, uh, building up the uh, you know the brightness in the middle and darkening the edges. So uh, let's go back and add another. Uh, let's add another levels adjustment here. And this time we can, yeah, you know, we can use this just to darken the image a bit. And yeah, this time I'll invert. I'll start with an inverted mask to hide the effect. And now I'll take a white brush and just brush it in where I want this to be in the scene. So just mainly in the sky. And because of the nature of this shot, you know, I can use these big broad brush strokes without having to resort to luminosity masking to really get too detailed with them. Um, if these trees in the foreground do start to get a bit too dark, then I might need to, um, I might need to use a luminosity selection just to help remove whatever effects are making them too dark um, you know, a bit more accurately than what I'm doing just with a big brush but for now I think this is going to serve us well so let's see that now okay that's already looking quite nice I'm going to sort of go for like a bit of a darker uh, more mysterious kind of eerie feel to this uh, to this image so you know we're heading for a dark kind of result um, okay, let's let's try a bit of contrast now, specifically just picking out this this wooden hut. Uh, so let's add another levels adjustment, and I'm just going to crank these uh, control points quite heavily, just so that that's really starting to pop. Um, the rest of the image is actually looking quite interesting. Uh, it's a bit too contrasty. You know, it's taken away from that misty look and feel of the shot, but I do like what it's doing to the colors of the leaves in the foreground. So maybe we can, like if I invert the mask now, so Command or Control I, I can take this white brush and kind of brush the effect in to the, uh, to the hut. And then kind of on a lesser degree, or to a lesser degree on a lower opacity, I can just brush this in a bit gradually in the leaves, just to bring a bit of it through like so. And I have brightened up the tree just behind this hut, which I didn't really want to do. That kind of stands out as a bit of a halo-y. Um, so let's see if we can just remove that from here. Okay, that's quite effective. All right, so I'm just zooming out and zooming in uh, because I find like when you, when I'm making adjustments like this, darkening the outside and brightening the middle, it's easy to go too far and make it look like I've uh, basically just shined a torch uh, on on the main subject. So yeah, you don't necessarily see that when you're viewing the image right up close like this. Uh, it's easier to detect like halos and those kind of issues when you zoom out 
for some reason I can't explain. Uh, but this is not looking too bad. I actually quite like where it's going. Um, so next I think we'll just... Well, there's a couple more things I want to do. One is to add a bit of a contrast vignette to further darken the edges. And two is to add a bit of detail, um, like sharpening the uh, the detail in the in the hut here. So what should we do first? Let's let's use the contrast vignette first. Um, under the effects section of my panel, we've got this contrast vignette here, um, and this is creating a curves adjustment with a specific um, with a specific sort of setting there uh, with the uh, the black point here we've kind of nudged up and then we've darkened using a control point in the middle there. Uh, so I'm just going to bring this in. I need quite a large brush for this, I think, and on a reasonably low opacity, about 30%. I'm just going to brush in around the edges, around the top, and then just the bottom edge and the bottom right corner. Now let's see the effect that's had. Okay, again, quite subtle. Subtlety is always the best way rather than trying to do too much at once with one big edit. Um, so I quite like that. Now let's uh, let's add some detail. So we can add a, uh, a high pass filter layer. So the long way around to do that would be to go um, edit, oh no, select all, edit, copy merged, edit, paste and then so that gives us this layer which is a copy of the entire image with all the adjustments applied and then we can go filter high pass and then we can kind of increase this radius value until we see some definition in the object that we're trying to bring the definition out in we can then click OK and then change this layers blend mode to overlay and then we can add a layer mask, invert the layer mask to black so that we're hiding this effect. And then with a white brush, we can just bring it in uh, just in that area that we want to sharpen. So that looks pretty good there. Now, if you want to shortcut that whole process, I'll just hide this layer now. Uh, then we can come into the finishes section of the panel and well, there's two detail enhancement uh, methods here. One is a sharpening method. So this is best for small detail, like sharpening, uh, just general sharpening, really. This cloud dramatizer, I created it to add definition and contrast to clouds, but it actually works quite well in other situations as well. So we can use it here. If I just hit the button for the cloud dramatizer, then that is now going to do that whole thing that we just went through and did with the creating the high pass filter layer and then adding the mask. Um, so what we've got now is basically a copy of this um, that we can now just brush in, which I'll do here through the middle. And we can see if I zoom in again, we're sharpening and bringing detail or bringing attention to this, uh, to this hut by just increasing the contrast like so. Now, at the moment, we, you know, this is probably close to being a, a finished image, I think, um, from my perspective anyway. Uh, I think maybe there was one other thing I just I remember doing on the first run through of this image. Uh, it's a bit of a strange technique, but it can help add like a really cool darkening effect. Um, I don't know if it's something that has like a, you know, I don't know if there's a, like an alternative way of doing this that creates an exactly the same, or that creates an exact same uh, result. But um, I'll show you what it is anyway, and you can use it and just play around. So basically what I'm going to do is add an empty layer. And on the keyboard, I'm going to press, uh, or I'm going to hold command or control and then delete. So that's going to fill the uh, layer with uh, with the background color so because I had the background color is white um, what I actually want to do is fill it with black so I'm going to just switch the uh, background color to black and now I'm going to press command or control and delete that's going to fill the layer with black 
And then I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this layer. And as, as I do that, you can see on around about 30% opacity, that's kind of darkened the image to this point. And you know, it's like a sliding scale there that you can use uh, to just bring that darkening effect in to the image. So, you know, if I leave it on about 30%, you can see that's created quite a dark result. Um, probably too dark in the main subject. So we can now add a layer mask, use a black brush. And as before, we can gradually remove this effect from the middle. So I think what I'll do this time actually is just remove it from in between the trees just so that we keep that fog um, you know, in the shot. We're not completely eliminating it. And then maybe a little bit of the foreground as well. So this is the effect of this uh, darkening layer. And you know, like I said, there may be another way of creating this exact same kind of dark effect but I just quite like using a black layer. Uh, it's quite quite easy to do, and anything that's easy and gives a decent result has got to be good, right? So, uh, yeah, just zooming out again. I mean, maybe we could adjust these outside edges so they're not quite so dark. But otherwise, I think we've reached a pretty good point with this image. Now, if, uh, if this happens to be too kind of saturated for your uh, liking, then we can just you know, reduce the uh, saturation here just using the hue saturation slider. I don't like using this to increase saturation, it can be quite garish, but it's not bad if you just want to reduce the, uh, reduce the saturation just to create a bit more of a subtle color look. Um, but either way, you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there. Um, you know, I just think the colors colors are good, but they might you know some people might think they're a bit strong, so that's an option that you can use there just to reduce the uh, saturation. So um, yeah, I think with that said, let's let's have a look at the um, before and after. I'll just get rid of this hue saturation layer. So I'll hide all these layers that we've just added, so that we can remind ourselves where we started with this image. And uh, yeah, and then I'll just add these back on and we can have a look at where we ended up and yeah I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with that that would be uh, you know, that would be a shot that I'm happy with if it were my own so um, yeah hopefully this has been a useful tutorial and uh, walkthrough for you and like I said most of these techniques you can create just using uh, you know adjustment layers as I've done here but the panel if you haven't got the luminosity masking panel uh, then you know these various sections under here light color effects finishes and output for web uh, These can you know be used in combination with the luminosity masks that the top section helps you create so you can create masks and then Apply them immediately to these effects um, You know in just a couple of clicks or you can just use these effects and uh, whatnot to you know to basically just shortcut some of the uh, common adjustments and effects that you would normally create using these adjustment layers. So like I said, if you haven't got the panel yet, uh, click the link below this video and you can get the panel for just 97 Australian dollars. And uh, yeah, I think that probably wraps this video up. So I will bid you farewell and uh, thank you for watching and I'll speak to you next time. Cheers.